we're going to be talking about some incentives that home sellers are offering to actually compete in this competitive market market and to compete with new construction. That's something that we can talk about is that yes. if you're selling your home, especially here in Austin, with all this new construction going on, you are competing with them as well. Parker, what have you been noticing about these kind of seller incentives? Oh man, this I'm so glad we're talking about this. And let me just say that if you are somebody who's trying to sell your home, um, it is very, very difficult to ever beat the incentives that someone's going to get in a new build right in a, in a new construction because those builders have got deep pockets and they do crazy incentives that being said there's some really easy things that you can do to make yourselves more competitive one thing is it's called a two one buy down or a one zero buy down but i'm just going to talk about the two one buy down the two one buy down especially when we're in an environment where we are now where interest rates are higher than they've been since about 2000 the, the highest they've been since 2011 2012 is what you do is a two one buy down is where either the seller or the lender all right it can't be the buyer it's got to be either the seller or the lender um in your case it's going to be the seller you essentially say hey we will as part of our incentive package are going to offer a two one buy down now what that means is that you're probably going to have to kick in around two percent of whatever that loan amount is going to be so it's, it's not cheap but here's how it makes it attractive. What a two one buy down does is let's say that um, Omar, you're going to come and you're going to try to buy a house that I'm selling and I'm offering a two one buy down. Right. And you are qualified or pre approved at a six percent interest rate. That's pretty good, honestly, for where we are right now. So here's what that two one buy down means. What that means is when you close Omar, the seller is paying in advance enough money to the lender to where year number one year number one you're making payments as if your interest rate was a four so your note rate is a six percent but your whole first year in the house four percent interest rate all right that could be hundreds of dollars cheaper then why is it called a two one buy down that's because the first year the first year two interest points lower then the second year it's going to be one percent lower so again, if you're pre-approved, if you're pre-approved for six percent, year two, you're making payments based off of a five percent interest rate. And then once you get to year three, all the way to year thirty, you're back up to the note rate, or for our example, the six percent. So why is this huge? It's huge because mortgage rates they go up, they go down. I mean that, that that's been the case ever since mortgage rates was even a thing. And so what the hope is, is that when you do a two, one buy down, by the time they get out of that introductory period, rates will have already gone down and then they can refi to the lower rate. Right. Um, so it's called a two, one buy down. It does not cost a ton of money and it allows buyers to be like, okay, I, I'm not going to feel comfortable making that mortgage payment at my current interest rate. But if it's two percentage points lower, I can float that for a year. Heck, I can even float it for year two when it's a little bit higher. And so it's a great way to get people, you know, into the door. So that's the two one buy down. Let me ask you, so could they also use this as kind of money to just pay for any closing costs on just instead of apart from buying down the rate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually here, let me, can I show you something kind of cool? Yeah, you can share your screen. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going rogue. I just want to make sure. And actually, anybody, anybody who subscribes to our uh, our series, um, I'll send you this calculator so you can kind of crunch some numbers. It's really, oh, really sweet. cool. Yeah. Especially if you like, uh, especially if you like spreadsheets. Let's say that your VA, you're buying the house for four hundred thousand. It's a zero dollar down payment, so your loan amount is four hundred thousand. And let's say that we're at a six percent flat for interest rate. Okay. okay. What that means is that look at the difference here. Year one, you're paying $1,909. Year two, $2,147. Years three through 30, $2,398. That's a 400, no, that's almost a $500 swing. So what you're saying, and this is how much it's going to cost you, cost the seller. It would cost them $8,873.48. So if you are a seller and you want to be crazy competitive with your $400,000 house or whatever it may be, 
yeah, it's going to cost you 8,800 bucks, but look at this. I mean, Omar, if you're trying to buy a $400,000 house and you see you got to pay 2,400 a month, that's might make you be like, uh, I don't know about that. But if you could buy that same house and only pay $1,900, even though you know it's only going to be for a year, I mean, all of a sudden that becomes really, really tempting. And I'm not saying that 8,800 $8, bucks is, is cheap, but it, it's a sliding scale, right? So if you're selling a $250,000 house, right? Then the required buy down by the seller is 5,545. It'll cost you roughly 2% of whatever that loan amount ends up being. So um, really cool calculator. And if you're a seller, I think this is a great way to kind of prepare yourself for like, all right, I just got an offer. Um, I'm selling my house for 800,000 and the person buying it's putting a $400,000 down payment. Well, shoot. I'm selling an eight hundred thousand dollar house. I'm only having to pay eight thousand eight hundred. Versus, if you have an offer and they're putting ten percent down and it's a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan, do you see how much more expensive that becomes? So this is a great tool for sellers because if you if you are offering a two one buy down as part of your incentive, then it's not driven by your list price the cost of offering that to a seller i mean the cost of offering that to a buyer is driven by your loan amount that's where the cost comes from does that make sense omar yeah and one thing i want to add to that for especially a, just a different way to look at it is that instead of you having to re do a price reduction or a price improvement this is a way to not have to do that but another a way to incentivize to attract more buyers to your, to your, to your home, to your listing. That's an amazing point. Omar. I was thinking about it. Cause you know, as soon as I see like a price reduction alert on realtor.com or Redfin it's blood in the water. And I'm like, what's wrong with this house? But if I see a house that's listed at 500 and then it stays listed at 500, but now there's this cool buyer incentive, that's not going to raise nearly the red flag that a price reduction would. That's a, that's a really brilliant point. I'm glad you brought that up. I was curious cause I saw how the monthly kind of differed. Would if you're paying less of a monthly payment for your mortgage, wouldn't that affect like your debt to income ratio and what you can afford in any way? Uh, like that's a great question. So with the two one buy down, the lender, me, I have to qualify you off that note rate, right? Like the okay. where we're going to be after it's all said and done. So you do have to qualify at that six percent and what that payment would be, the twenty four hundred. Um, okay. As long as you qualify for it, I mean that's just great. That's that's 500 bucks in your pocket. And I actually had somebody do this recently. You know what they're doing with their savings, Omar? They're hoping, they're hoping that in two years, interest rates will be down. But just in case they're not, they're actually, they're putting their, their monthly savings for those intro years into a money market account. And that way, if rates haven't gone down, they at least have enough money saved up to where that, that note payment that starts in year three is not nearly as big of a shock as it would have been otherwise. Mm, that's a good point. See, that's good. See, that's thinking ahead of the game. I like that. Can we talk about another strategy really quickly? Hit me with it. All right. So, and I've, I just started seeing this. Um, you will have sellers put actually in the listing or they'll negotiate with the buyer's agent and say, hey, we are going to need a lease back, but we're going to pay. And then they'll actually do like a very generous per diem day rate right and here's why that's a big deal is if i am the person buying the house the second that whether or not i'm living in if i own it i'm paying that mortgage and so if you're the seller right and you say hey we need it we need to do a, a 15 day lease back and we'll actually pay you a mortgage payments worth of of rent for like that half month lease back Again, this is a creative way of not reducing, and that's really what we should be calling this, how to like, how to attract buyers without reducing your price. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Omar, but the second you start reducing prices, that's when you start to offer low ball offers from, from buyers, right? So right. I thought that was a really cool strategy too, is we've got this two, one buy down. We've also got a, a generous paid lease back option. Um, all ways to functionally accomplish the exact same thing as reducing a price without raising the same red flags. If you are looking at homes and they don't have this as an incentive, be like, hey, 
have your realtor negotiate for something like this, you know? That's a great point. And then I saw this in the video the other day, like that was cool. Like the price is just a snapshot of in time. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Another way of saying that too is, uh, you know what your home is worth? Was someone's willing to pay for it. That's it. You know, in real estate, every day the market can change. And it's really just, you know, knowing how to kind of navigate through that. And at the end of the day, if you've had your home for five plus years, you have, you've, you've built up equity. So you're still going to be winning. Right. Parker, thank you again for your time. Thank you for joining us and everybody until next time.